Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're going to look at OS2 Warp 4.52 and some of its quirks and features. I'm actually not going to talk too much about the installation, but more so we're going to look at the different concepts surrounding it. And this will probably be my last OS2 video since we've been doing a lot of them recently. Maybe in the future we'll do some more, but this will probably cap it off. Uh, before we get too far into it, I want to talk a little bit about the hardware. In the past, for the past couple of videos, I've actually used my Gateway 486DX266 to do the installations. And that has worked pretty well. What I have found with Warp 4.52 is that installing on a 486 is, well, uh, lackluster. So I would not suggest installing OS2 Warp 4.5 on a 486 class system. So from there I thought, okay, I'll just go ahead and install on my Pentium 233 MMX system. However, it had a 20 gigabyte hard drive and would not work due to the large hard drive size. So I thought, okay, let me put in my IDE to CF adapter into that machine and try the installation and that would not work. It would lock up. I tried switching out the IBM DASD driver, as was suggested by some folks, for a custom driver. No luck. Lock up, lock up, lock up. As such, we have this very unlikely candidate, which ended up being the subject of the installation, a Packard Bell Legend Supreme 1125, which is a Pentium 200 megahertz with a 3.2 gigabyte hard drive. As such, that's what we went with. And aside from sound, which this particular system has a sound card that's even hard to get working under Windows operating systems because it's so uncommon. Things seem to be working. So let's go ahead and take a tour and look at the quirks and features of OS2 Warp 4.52. So here you can see the desktop and what I find particularly interesting about the desktop is it almost seems like they couldn't decide if they wanted to go with a Windows 95 style approach or a traditional approach. You have all of these icons on the desktop here, but you can also come down here and see similar icons. Here's our connections. We have OS2 system down here as well as here. Programs, TCP IP shadows, Netscape communicator, and shredder. So you have icons in two places. But wait, there's more. We also have this taskbar that has icons on it as well that can get you different places. So it's very interesting to me that there's really two or three different ways to get to programs. And actually, this is a theme that we saw in past versions of OS2, where you could get to programs for, from two or three different places. It's no different here, except for they've incorporated these Windows 95 style concepts. Top left here, you can see that we have our TCP IP group. And this is very similar to what we've seen in the past. We can come in here to TCP IP internet, LAN or modem. So, They've actually gotten rid of some of the confusedness that we saw in 3.0, where we couldn't decide which group to choose. If we come into LAN here, we have our FTP, TFTP, our Telnet. We can launch Telnet like we've done in past videos and connect up to our Raspberry Pi with a new connection, which we learned ANSI is the way to go. And that looks like that works pretty well. So it looks almost identical to 3.0. We do have a group for configuring TCP IP where we can go in and make different changes here. Apparently you can configure a remote system, which is really interesting. I haven't looked into this too much. Oh, interesting. So you can actually log into a remote host and configure the host and password that way. We don't have any other OS24 machines on the network, so that's probably not going to work, but that's definitely an interesting concept. Beyond that, it looks like we can do some various customization for things like Telnet. Oh, nice. You can choose like the default emulator type when you launch Telnet. That's kind of neat. As well as keyboard and colors and attributes and mappings and things. So that's kind of handy if you're using Telnet uh, pretty frequently. We also have this TCP IP information. And that gives you some different command references and things for TCP IP. Administering DNS and DHCP, that's kind of cool. I'd actually be really interested to see what the different commands look like. Okay, so it's a help guide. And it tells you different things like communication, configuration, file chant transfer, things along those lines. So that's kind of neat as well. 
And then we have a DOS Windows group under TCP IP. Okay, so you can run a Windows or a DOS ping utility. Let's run the Windows one. Okay, so it launches a Windows 3.1 style program. Kind of cool. And I guess we can choose a host. And you'll get ping results. That's actually pretty nifty. I like it. Now of great interest on the desktop, we have Netscape Communicator installed. When was the last time you saw that? So in OS2 3.0, they had a IBM web file viewer, as I recall, and it looks like now we have Netscape Communicator installed. And actually several of the installation packages for OS2 rely on using Netscape Communicator. There's a Java add-on which requires it, amongst some other things. So Netscape Communicator is actually used uh, to install some programs by using Java applets. Unfortunately, home.netscape.com is no longer in use or service. It's a casualty of the internet, but we should be able to go to Google. And there you have it. Uh, not quite looking too great, but it looks like it's at least usable. We can see what 2 plus 2 is and see if it comes up with an answer. And indeed, 2 plus 2 is 4, so there you have it. It's actually kind of interesting to see some of the different um, bookmarks that you see here. A lot of them are pointing to Netscape. If we go to the channels bookmark, though, you can see businesses, computing and internet, education, games. Let's go to games. Oh, unfortunately, that's not going to work either. But they did have a variety of channels that you could go to if you wanted to look at different things. Personal finance. And once again, unfortunately, they're all pointing to Netscape. But that would have been a cool concept back in the day. Install Netscape and you have all these different items that you can go to. So basically, it looks a lot like standard communicator just for OS2 Warp. There you have it. Next up, we have programs. And here you can see that we actually have Netscape Communicator again. And one thing I did like about Communicator in the day was all of the different applications associated with it could be launched individually. We won't go ahead and do that at this point, but you can see icons for every single one of them. For multimedia, I did make an attempt to install my sound card with some drivers. Unfortunately, I do have a very specialized sound card in this Packard Bell, which is integrated to the motherboard and wasn't quite able to get the drivers working, but I did get close. We do have sound bites. Unfortunately, none of them are going to play, but you could double click on those to play those if you wanted to. Apparently, there's garden and ocean sounds. Interesting. And there's also a group of space sounds. So I guess you can change the different themes for the desktop. There's an images folder, and in there it looks like there's some JPEG images that you can see, bicycles and flowers and Art Deco. Let's pop that one open. Ah, very nice. So we do have some stock images. Also have a bitmaps folder. Where we can look at things like this nice OS2 work background. There you have it. As for sound, there's not a whole lot we can do because I don't have my card configured, but if I did, you could come in here and play the sounds. And if we go here, okay, here's where we have those different schemes that we saw not long ago, the garden, the desktop, the ocean, and the space, and those can be applied via this dialog here. Kind of neat. You can also set your warning beep or the icon for this application. There's also digital audio and compact disc and video and MIDI, but unfortunately without our sound card configured, we won't be able to see much there. There's also a movies folder. And it looks like there's a movie in here that we could play, though not with any sound. A couple of nice happy birds there. Next up here is this TCP IP internet. We've already looked at that. Next up we have utilities. And here we can see we have the OS2 system editor, which we've had all the way since at least 1.3, as well as this enhanced editor that I believe showed up in 3.0 and is also in 
uh, 4.0, though it looks like in 4.0 it's more enhanced than it was in 3.0. Watson works. So it looks like we can type things, we can change the style, and we can change the font, which is kind of cool. Next we have seek and scan files, which if you wanted to find a certain pesky file, you could search for it. So, and this does a pretty good job. Again, this is a little faster machine than we've used in the past, so it does a better job at finding things. Next we have the icon editor, and it's kind of neat. I guess you can come in here and open up an icon, and if you want, you can change the colors of pixels on a pixel by pixel basis. Kind of interesting. And we can see the uh, icon being represented up here in the corner. So if you've ever wanted to edit icons, here's your chance. Hey, look at this. Next up, we have a CPU monitor. So that'll show you how utilized the processor is. And I've also noticed that in the bar down here at the bottom, you can also change to the CPU monitor. So if you want to see it in more than one place, you can definitely do that. Let's see if we can make the CPU do some work. Uh, apparently not. OS2 must have some good management for uh, dragging windows around because it doesn't seem to be loading the CPU too much. So that's the CPU monitor. And as we can move along, you can see a clipboard viewer and a picture viewer, as well as some error log and audit log utility programs. Uh-oh. Apparently, uh, you're not allowed to run this on requesters. I wonder if that's going to be saved to the error log. We can try the error log and see if it got saved. And apparently not. It looks like we don't have any errors. Our Packard Bell Client 549 is just a perfect machine. No errors. We also have the software updates icon. But unfortunately, we don't have a modem connected. Notice how modem's in quotes. So. Uh, we would need to choose some other sort of a thing. I guess we could choose a LAN connection. And unfortunately, when we go to look for our software updates, which you can see this launched communicator, the service5.boulder.ibm.com server is no longer in collective usage, so there will be no updates for us today via that mechanization. We also have internet and TCP IP utilities, which we have seen elsewhere. And there's apparently a network clipboarding and a network messaging concept that I guess we could send messages to other people on the network, though we're not really set up to do that, but if we could, that would be kind of neat. Next, we have games. And we have Solitaire uh, for Mahjong, Klondike, and OS2 Chess. In the opening screen, you saw me running uh, chess for computer against computer. And that seems to run pretty good on this uh, Pentium 200. Uh, and you can see the pieces moving along, and it's kind of fun. Uh, this would be pretty mesmerizing to watch <laughs> if you wanted to watch it for a while. Uh, what I have noticed is as time goes on, things slow down. And you can see it right now because the computer is trying to calculate its next move against itself. And the number of possibilities are probably pretty much endless. So that's chess. We also do have Klondike Solitaire. And it's an old mainstay with the whole OS2 card deck. Looks like it's having some sort of a problem. But you do see that available as well if you want to play Solitaire. We also have Mahjong Solitaire. And once again, it seems to be having some problems too. But in theory, you could play this as well. We also have this Java for OS2 folder where you can view Java applets, run Java programs, things along those lines. So that's kind of cool. Next, we have IBM Internet Connection for OS2. And as we look at the programs here, this is basically where things are set up for using the modem. Uh, so running these concepts here may result in trying to uh, launch a modem connection. And we're not set up that way, so we won't explore these. We'll just leave this be. Next, we have the connections section, and I find this fascinating, actually. The intent here was to bring all of your different connections to one window, kind of like my computer on modern machines. You can go browse drive C, and you can look at your printers or your network and your network services, kind of cool. You can also look at websites. And now we can actually see a collection of different websites. 
I think that we even have some airlines that no longer exist, like Transworld Airlines, which is in here. So that's kind of neat. As well as a lot of different computing sites, entertainment and reference, and web search. You've got Disney for entertainment, Epicurious, some of these other things from back in the day. Some of them are still around today. Different banks, web search sites like Alta Vista. I remember back when that was a thing. I think that there might be one web search site that is conspicuously absent from this list that begins with a G. Some different IBM web pages, OS2 pages, education, and news and sports. So there you have it. I think we need to try and click on one of these. I don't think any of them are going to work. Let's pick something that's still around like Adobe. And indeed this takes us to adobe.com, but there are some problems going from there. Next we have the Assistance Center, where we've got information on troubleshooting and software updates and some technical notes. So basically an online guide here with an information, which is kind of neat, an index for help, so you can look at different help topics. So this is kind of your online help support as you're trying to use OS2. Next we have OS2 system. And we can see a lot of the different uh, setup options. The minimized window viewer, if you want to see windows that are minimized. The warp center, as well as different templates and system setup, where you can go to change different setup options for your system. You can see a lot of them here. WinOS 2, multimedia, we can go look at the clock. There's the clock. As well as TCP IP configuration, if there's something you wanted to do to change your TCP IP settings. There's also various settings for things like the mouse. Oh wow, you can choose a right-handed or a left-handed mouse. Different pointers, as well as how your buttons are mapped and your double click. So I'm seeing a lot more options here for mouse properties than I've seen in past versions of OS2. We also have WinOS2 setup where you can change different items there for full screen or window settings. Because there's a fast load option, that's not a bad thing as well as copying data between the two uh, different systems. We can also look at the color palettes where you can actually change the color of different windows by dragging colors to them, which is kind of cool. So that's pretty much some of the different options that we have in system setup. We didn't look at all of them. Uh, this hardware manager looks kind of interesting. You can, you can see different things about your PC. Uh, but yeah, definitely there's lots of things here to explore, which are kind of neat for these system setup options. So next up we have command prompts. And what's interesting here is that you also have the WinOS 2 options. We can choose this WinOS 2 window and you can see a Windows 3.1 style interface. And what's interesting is if we go to the program manager, you can see it's the WinOS 2 program manager as opposed to the Microsoft Windows program manager. But we can definitely click through the different options here and see our familiar Windows 3.1 interface. We also have our traditional uh, OS2 command windows. And maybe I'll use this opportunity to show that we can map to a network drive if we want to. And now we're all set to go and look at files on network shares. And that can be done in an OS2 window. We also have this drives icon here which looks similar to what we saw from the uh, connections window earlier. So you can navigate to the different drives that you have and see files that you have. Now, as we go back to the desktop, one final area that we can look at is this toolbar along the bottom. So if we look here, we have a clock in the far right corner. And if we left click on it, we can switch between different date formats. We also have this little information icon here, which brings up some of the different information items from the Assistance Center that we saw earlier, but once again, available here. We have our different command prompts, which are available from a launchable toolbar setting, as well as our different configuration items, which you can reach from the 
toolbar as well. So we were in WinOS 2 setup not long ago. You could also access that from here. You can also control the volume if you have a sound card installed and set up. As well as your printer options. And look at your different uh, disks like we saw in a couple of other places as well. And now you can even see that we have the network drive mapped that we can look at items on our network drive as well. And here we have a couple of different options for uh, different trays. We don't have any set up, but we could set up different trays there. And this bar is kind of cool. Right now it's showing the system activity monitor, but if we click on it, we can also see the disk space monitor and see how much free space we have on the disk. This icon here will shut down the system, which we don't care to do right now. This one will help us find things via the search that we ran earlier. Here we can initiate lock with a password and you'll have the background displayed and the system will be locked. Enter the password to exit. And here we can change between warp center and desktop apparently, though it doesn't seem to do very much. And then finally over here on the left, as we noted earlier, we have the menu, which looks very similar to the icons you have on the desktop. One other thing I wanted to show was the system setup. So if we come over here to this icon, we can come in and do an install remove and do a selective install. And with selective install, we can do different configuration for different items. Very similar to when we did our initial system installation. And we can also do next and next again and remove or add different components that perhaps we did not add or remove as a part of initial system installation. So there's that. So there you have it. There's my little uh, nickel tour of OS2 Warp 4.52. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, definitely subscribe to the channel. We have more content to come. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If not, feel free to give it a thumbs down. We use your feedback to determine what sort of videos we make in the future. As I noted, I'll put down in the description below some instructions if you want to try and install OS2 Warp for yourself. Uh, good luck. Hopefully it goes better for you than it did for me. Uh, you can certainly install it on a virtual machine as well, and that seems to go well. That's what I have for you this time, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.